All right, so recall that when we talk about parameter, what we mean is the value of the population that we want to learn about. These parameters are usually unknown to us, but we can usually estimate them with a sample um, with the sample approximation called the point estimate. And if you do everything right, that is if you do things with random sampling and a large enough sample size, point estimates are, um, are usually reasonably accurate, but even then it, it will rarely match the parameter exactly. For example, to find the probability of getting heads with a coin flip, you could flip a coin a thousand times, and uh, while your answer will probably be close to 50%, it's unlikely to be exactly. And if you flip the coin another thousand times, you'll probably get something different from your first answer, but both times you'll probably get something that's close to 50%. Fortunately, we can measure the error in a sample, which we call the margin of error, and use it to provide a range of plausible values for the parameter. This range of plausible values is called the confidence interval. And the way we compute a confidence interval is we take a point estimate and we add and subtract the margin of error. So for confidence interval, the, the point estimate is always in the middle of the confidence interval. And then you spread out plus or minus the margin of error. Um, done right, your the actual true parameter, the true value, is likely somewhere in that interval. It could be on the uh, on the right side, could be on the left side, could be near the point estimate, could be near the ends, but somewhere in the interval is likely the parameter. Now that margin of error is a product of confidence coefficient and standard error. So, so far for confidence coefficient, we've been looking at 1.64 for 90%, 1.96 for 95%, 2.58 for 99%. And the standard error, uh, well, the confidence coefficient measures how confident we want to be in our estimate. The reliability of this estimate depends on meeting certain conditions, usually independence and sample size. The standard error is a measure of the typical error in a point estimate. So the specific formula depends on the type of point estimate. So far we've looked at proportions and difference proportions. Where for proportions, the point estimate is a sample proportion, while the standard error is given by the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. Where p hat is the sample proportion, your point estimate, and n is the sample size. For difference proportions, the point estimate is the difference of sample proportions, you know, difference between the P1 hat from the first group and P2 hat from the second group. And the standard error is basically a combination of standard errors for the two groups. Point estimates and sample size are all that's needed to compute the standard error for proportion or difference proportions. However, for other parameters, that's not usually enough. For instance, for means, which we'll get to very soon, the standard error depends on the standard deviation and the sample size. And in fact, the point estimate, which is the sample mean, will play no role in terms of computing the standard error. For medians, the best you can say is the standard error is unreliable. So we won't even bother with a formula.